And now the end is near. My Way by Frank Sinatra, one of the most iconic songs of all time, has also led to numerous murders in the Philippines. Is there an eerie curse at play? Or is there perhaps more to this story than we realize? And I've been keeping all the letters that I wrote to you That each one a line or two I'm fine baby, how are you? Hello there, it's me again and I am here in one of the very many, many, many karaoke bars in Manila to explore this incredibly popular Filipino pastime as well as a particularly dark story associated with it. Now karaoke, it may not be for you, may not be for everyone, but I, I do enjoy my karaoke and the Filipinos in particular, they really, 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 really love their karaoke. Karaoke is a very social thing. I mean, our culture is a very social culture. Karaoke is present in, for example, like parties, even wakes, like funeral wakes. Kahit mayaman mahirap, may ilaya siyang kumanta na i-express niya yung ano niya, yung feelings niya sa pagkanta. Singing is just a very, just part of our lives, I think. There is a lot of traditional Filipino musical stuff happening. For example, I study music in Mindanao amongst Muslim Filipinos, a music called Kulintang, and this is how they do it. One person plays this instrument called the Kulintang, and you rotate because you want to hear people play a piece that everybody knows, but in your own way. And so, yes, videoki, karaoke are kind of cheap ways to be entertained, to do something that takes you out of the grind of daily life. But it also has elements of indigenous Filipino musical tradition that wasn't wiped out by the Spanish. However, amidst the fun, joy, and usually drunken revelry that comes with karaoke, there is a very dark and eerie phenomenon that has taken place here in the Philippines, a phenomenon that some here even consider a curse. Spooky. Now, of course, virtually everyone knows the song My Way, the classic Frank Sinatra ballad. Although, fun fact, My Way is actually an English language cover of a French song called Comme d'habitude, performed by Claude Francois. Great song. Now, what's not so great, though, is the number of murders that have taken place here in the Philippines because of the song my way. You see, according to Esquire Magazine's Philippines, between 2002 and 2012, there were at least 12 people who were killed after singing My Way during karaoke. I mean, that is that's pretty eerie to think about, right? I mean, the, the fact that it was specifically because of the song. It wasn't like these were random karaoke-related violence over a variety of songs. This was specifically one song that led to at least 12 people dying. One of the earliest and most notable incidents took place on May 29, 2007 in the town of San Mateo Rizal. 29-year-old Romy Baligula took to the stage to perform My Way. And during his supposedly off-key performance, Robelito Ortega, a security guard at the bar, told him uh, to shut up because he was ruining the song. However, Romy decided to continue singing the song, to which Ortega, the security guard, responded by pulling out a 38 caliber pistol and shooting Romy Baligula in the chest. Romy died there at the scene before Robelito was arrested. And that's just one of near countless murders that have taken place because of this song. And I say near countless because even the police themselves don't have an actual number of how many murders there may have been. What the fuck? Well, <laughs> the idea of me talking about these murders while someone saying the whole new world is, is quite a... a trip hop version. A trip hop version of the whole new world is quite a mood. <laughs> hey, she did great. <laughs> All right. Despite the majority of the My Way killings taking place between 2002 and 2012, that's not to say that it stopped. Because in 2018, the curse struck again. 
In June of 2018, 61-year-old Jose Bosmion Jr. was at a birthday party in Dipolog City, Zamboanga del Norte. As the partygoers were singing karaoke and drinking, 28-year-old Rolando Cañeso went up to perform My Way. However, Jose, for some reason, decided to go up there and grab the microphone away from the younger Rolando before he could start singing, and a fist fight broke out. People tried separating them, but it was all in vain because Rolando had begun stabbing 61-year-old Jose, ultimately stabbing him to death. But if you're a skeptic and you think there is no possible dark supernatural force connected to my way, then what could possibly be a rational explanation for this uh, spree of murders associated with the song? Well, one potential answer was provided by Rolando Tolentino, a communications professor at the University of Philippines Diliman, who in an interview with the New York Times said, the Philippines is a very violent society, so karaoke only triggers what already exists here when certain social rules are broken. But maybe that's too simplistic uh, of an answer. I think a lot of our assumptions about the My Way killings, as I have read them in newspapers, are wrong <laughs> because I think the more interesting story is how Filipinos are still sort of sensationalized or their performance of American music is really a spectacle for the world to kind of be entertained by. This has happened several times. You know, there were the prisoners dancing Michael Jackson. Always front and center is that engagement with American culture. I don't think this would have been a story if the song was of like a Filipino song. We are, as a global public, focusing on the Frank Sinatra song and Filipinos are kind of voiceless. They're symbolically annihilated by projecting them as mimics of American culture, by sensationalizing what's going on. There's a larger interesting story here and it stretches all the way back to U.S. colonization of the Philippines. In 1898, after Spain ceded control of the Philippines, the United States began its own colonization of the country which would last until 1946. The Filipinos had already had a revolution. They fought against Spain. The Americans said, we'll help you kick out the rest of the Spanish and we'll be done. But then McKinley says, hmm, what if we just keep the Philippines? It wasn't that popular of an idea to acquire the Philippines. A bigger argument was like, we don't want to inherit all these like brown savages. Filipinos were all over the press in the United States, especially through these political cartoons, examples of why we shouldn't acquire the Philippines. An attempt to control the American public's perspective of Filipinos took place at the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, Missouri. Over a thousand Filipinos from rural tribal areas were brought to the United States. And this was because the U.S. colonial government really had to convince the American public, like, we're doing a good thing, guys. We are uplifting them, you know, white man's burden. And this time is not to show Filipinos as scary, but as subordinate. Okay, they're kind of different and weird, but we can definitely have Filipinos that we can one day mold into our own likeness. They really were highlighted. So look at these half-naked savages. These are words that newspapers are using. Look at these half-naked savages. They are primitive. They're not on the civilizational ladder. Well, the U.S. can help them get there. One of the main attractions of the World's Fair was the Philippine Constabulary Band, a group of talented Filipino musicians who the American public were made to believe were trained by Americans. By the time the United States got there in 1898, Filipinos had been doing Western or European music for like 150 years. So when the United States got there, the Filipinos had already been playing European music for a very long time. But of course, the notion that the band were already skilled musicians contradicted the narrative that the U.S. were civilizing Filipinos. So none of their prior expertise was ever mentioned while they were made to play American marches at the World's Fair. They played Stars and Stripes forever, the most out of any band at the fair. And people thought, oh my God, Filipinos do want to be part of America. They will strive to become good citizens of the United States, but 
subordinate ones. Let's not get crazy, not equal ones, but subordinate ones. And this is proof. This is proof that Filipinos can be civilized in some sort of way. And what the American public needed at the time was assurance that Filipinos could become part of the United States, but definitely not in an equal way. Yeah, they're good at music, but that's all. They're not going to be good at anything else. And this is how Americans were introduced to Filipinos. A bunch of stereotypes came out of that fair. A bunch of ways of viewing Filipinos from that fair are still around today. And I still think there's traces of that in this whole Frank Sinatra story, which is why we're talking about the song and not so much the larger context, which is like poverty, alcohol, rural violence, or sometimes I read some of them and I'm like, was it a really about the song or was it like this guy had a beef with this guy and it just exploded during this karaoke event? What kind of makes me sad about the My Way Killing story is that we've really erased the Filipino voices. What did they say about it? What were some of the motivations for these killings? And in my theory, it doesn't have that much to do with the song. I think a lot of those newspapers foreground the song because it is a way to put American music and American culture front and center in this story. And I think like the more interesting story is how we're still regurgitating these stereotypes, these assumptions, these caricatures of Filipinos doing American culture. It's just this phenomenon that we can really kind of like make a spectacle and sensationalize. Contradicting all the Western reports I had read claiming that My Way was still banned in the Philippines, I found that it was actually available to be sung at the karaoke bar we were at. That was my question. Is it really banned and can you find it? And you answered, yes, you can find it. Covering this story has really taught me to be mindful about how we can be guilty of viewing international true crime stories like this one through a Western lens. A lens that is often rooted in the destructive effects of colonization. Despite the dark nature of this story I've told here today, I hope you'll celebrate karaoke with me. Not just as a Filipino pastime, but as a way for us to connect with one another. I came to the Philippines as a solo traveler, your titular soliviant, but thanks to great nights like this one, I was able to leave with beautiful memories shared with my new local friends. Wherever you are, next time you have the chance to partake in some karaoke, do me a favor and take it. And while you're at it, maybe take a stab at singing my way. I'll be smiling at you from afar. Well, that, 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 that sounded creepy. Soft as an easy chair. Stupid. Fresh as a morning.